What we have for you today here is two capture cards from NZXT. So we have the NZXT Signal HD60 and this is the NZXT Signal 4K30. Both of them are supposedly made for different purposes and although this one looks like it's only at a higher resolution but sacrifices on the refresh rate, uh, I did discover something actually quite interesting. So we'll leave that for later and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to set it up do a quick test about these two capture cards to test out its delay using the Nintendo Switch and yeah, let's begin. So we start off with the NZXT Signal HD60 first. So the unboxing experience is fairly simple and as you can see here, the box is still using the iconic NZXT design and at the back here, we can see that it says stream and record up to 1080p 60fps, ultra low latency. We will of course try the latency later. And this is the general idea of this capture card. If we open it up, we have the capture card itself, which is lodged in there. Ah, oh, okay. I'm gonna leave this aside. And then we also have a USB type A to USB type C cable inside. So this is a USB 3.0 cable, you're going to need USB 3.0 to be able to capture in that high bit rate of 1080p 60fps and then we also have a HDMI cable, uh, user manual, not going to touch this and one thing I really want to comment is that NZXT you should have also included a USB type C to USB type C cable so yeah I'm going to leave all of this aside, take out the capture card I would have to say that the capture card is actually very simple in terms of design. It's having this satin finish, real nice to touch and also real minimalistic. So if you just put it on top of your table, this is how it looks like. It is very small. So around the sides of the NZXT Signal HD60, we have vents around these two sides because you know capture cards, they do get hot as well. And we also have four purple rubber feet at the bottom so it wouldn't skid around your table if you yank on the cable. And then a Type-C port for us to plug it into the PC and then double HDMI port. One of it is for input source and then the other one is for monitoring. So we will show you how to set it up right now. So before we begin, I actually prepared my own cables. So I'm using a Type-C to Type-C cable and I also have two HDMI cables with me so I can use the signal out as well. So Type-C cable to the laptop. First HDMI cable is the input which is labeled here nicely. It's called in, so I'm gonna plug this in. And then this cable is going to the Nintendo Switch first. And finally, the last HDMI cable is for this monitor that magically appeared thanks to magic of video editing. And now we got the NZXT Signal HD60 set up. And as you can see here, it looks really minimalist and uh, we didn't bother to cable manage everything, but essentially three cables is all you need. And on the PC side, we will have to go into OBS because I'm using OBS. Right click, add, and then you can see this option here, add the video capture device. And then when we click there, we'll just put the name NZXT Signal HD 60. And then we have to select <laughs> JDY. <laughs> Once we selected that, it should say no video because I have not turned on the switch yet. Let me do that right now. Uh, a few things that we need to set using OBS. So as you can see here, no, you cannot see because OBS decided to not record my screen. But whichever the case may be, I'm going to show you a few screenshots of what settings we use in OBS. So we have to select whatever device we're using. And in this screenshot, I'm showing that we're using the NZXT Signal HD60 video. Uh, this same setting is also applied to the NZXT Signal 4K30 which we will show later in the video but whichever the case I set the resolution to custom and then the resolution to 1080 and the FPS I want to lock it down to 60 FPS and then the video format is at NV12 we actually don't really have any options for us to choose from anyway we can choose YUI2 but I don't want that as for the color space, we're gonna use Rec 709 because it's gonna look a lot better. As for the color range, we are also using it in full because of course we want the best colors possible to be captured by the capture card and buffering, I'm just gonna leave it in auto detect. And this is the settings that we're gonna use for the entire video. So I'm just gonna show you one more trick here. If you want to listen to the audio coming out of the switch from your PC, you should be heading into settings, go to audio, 
select the microphone to be the capture card and then head back outside and then you need to select the advanced audio properties in there you have to set your microphone that you have assigned earlier into monitor only and then you can listen back to every single audio captured by the capture card on your PC. I'm not gonna let you listen here because it's gonna clash in terms of audio. Anyway, this is how Metroid Dread looks when it comes to the gameplay connected to the HD60. Let me just maximize it for you guys to see. So in terms of latency, I'll let you judge for yourself. So I'm just gonna do a real quick gameplay here. I have forgotten how to play this game since I finished it quite long ago and yeah, I never returned to the game. I think in terms of latency, this is real good. I can see everything is happening one to one. Whoop. No! <laughs> Why did I run into that? I die again. I ran into the same place. Nice. I kind of forgot where I should go. Anyway, as what we have shown here, the latency between what I'm showing on the capture card, as in whatever showing on the PC is actually captured through the capture card, and then the monitor is connected through the pass-through port of the NZXT Signal HD60. And as we can see, the latency is not noticeable at all, which is fantastic. So now I think we should proceed to the next capture card, which is the Signal 4K30. For the Signal 4K30, one thing I really want to highlight here is that it says that you are able to stream and record at up to 4K30 ultra low latency. But one thing that caught my attention is this one. Play without compromise supports HDMI 2.0 devices, zero light 4K60 HDR and also full HD 240Hz pass through. So you won't get any compromise if your console supports high refresh rate. So I'm just gonna unbox it real quick. Uh, the contents are the same, so I'm not gonna touch that. And this is the capture card itself, still in the exact same design. I'm gonna plug everything the same way as what we did for the 1080p 60fps version of this capture card. So this is in, then this one is the power, and this one is the output, as in the monitoring port. So we got everything hooked up just identically to the Signal HD60. Yeah, HD60. So I didn't have to do anything with the OBS setting menu. I just have to change the device to the new NZXT Signal 4K30 video. And I left everything just like what I have did with the HD60 because the switch doesn't support 4K. So yeah, again, I'm gonna do a quick latency test right now. I'm gonna full screen this. Whoop. And as you can see, obviously there's going to be no issues here. Um, one interesting thing about this capture card in particular, as in the 4K30, is because if you want to play it with, uh, you know, next-gen consoles with all the high frame rate, you're going to have a better experience. It's difficult to play and talk at the same time, but anyway, yeah. You... You... Oh... If you have the PS5 or the Xbox Series S, is it? Series S and Series X, if I got the name correct, yeah. Those consoles will support 1080p at 120. Okay, so you have two choices then. Either you go for 1080p at higher frame rates or 4K at higher frame rates, but as what we can see here, this capture card is only able to capture at 4K 30, but if you use the this, this secondary display here as a pass-through port, then it is supposed to go up to 4K 60, with HDR support or Full HD at 240Hz. So if you as a player, you want to use the 4K30 capture card, then you won't have a compromised experience. It's just that your viewers on your live stream, maybe on Twitch, Facebook Live, if anyone actually uses that, then you, yeah, your viewers will look at it at 30 FPS. While we don't have the local pricing for both of these capture cards, I died once again, uh, for the US pricing, I'll leave everything on the screen here. Hopefully, it will more or less be the same in Malaysia when we directly convert it. Uh, yeah, that's about it. In terms of capture card, I would still say these two are very functional, but the inclusion of just Type-A to Type-C cable 
it's not enough. Please give us Type-C to Type-C. And other than that, I would say this capture card does what it needs to do. It's a very basic capture card, but it does what it does really well. That's it.